Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and due to the complete colossal sideshow that occurred today at the UFC, I am going to have to do, have to, but I'm going to do a uh, an updated video on the, uh, the reshuffling of the fights and how it's completely changed the outlook for the slate. Um, for those that you know were unaware, first of all, there was this kind of this huge fight uh, backstage that suspended the press conference. And then when Hamad uh, Sh uh, Shemaev uh, took the scales, he missed weight by about eight pounds. And they had to, um, you know, and and and, and Diaz uh, said, well, I'm not fighting you at, the, at this weight. At this weight. Um, so they actually, and I, I've never seen this before, but I'm sure it's happened. They essentially switched like the opponents for three of the fighters. So now, now you have Shamaya going against Kevin Holland, who was originally going to fight, um, Jay, uh, what's his name? Uh, Daniel Rodriguez. Um, Daniel Rodriguez, on the other hand, he's now going to fight Jingling Lee. Um, who is going to fight Tony Ferguson, and Tony Ferguson is now going to fight Nate Diaz. And it's called fortunately or un unfortunately, whatever, DraftKings, once they release their salaries, they're locked in. Um, when it's within 24 hours, I think, of the fight, they really can't change the salaries. So you have these salaries that were created based on odds that just don't exist anymore. And, you know, you, you, you now have some incredible imbalances that you're going to have to, you're going to have to deal with. Um, and, and, and let's talk about them. I mean, kind of right off the bat. So, I mean, let's, let's first, I guess, talk about the Shemaev fight. So Shemaev is still a huge favorite in his fight. Um, so his projection is really not going to be impacted. Um, he's still a minus 500 favorite. Now it's not like a minus 1500. Okay. So it's a little worse. Um, and his inside the distance prop is going to change a little bit, right? Shemaev winning inside the distance is now something like, um, where is this? Shemaev wins by TKO plus 170, submission plus 300. Basically, Shemaev winning by decision is plus 300. What else do we have here? Wow, there are all kinds of different props here. None, nonetheless, um, his projection is going to be a little bit worse, okay, um, at 9,600. Holland unfortunately, is going to have to still have his $8,700 price tag, which means he's being priced as about a two-to-one favorite, and he's a four-to-one underdog. So he's basically unplayable. I mean, look, he's going to be 2% owned as a result of that, so feel free. But but mathematically, he's just, yes, you know, this is theoretical zero. You know, you just can't play that. Um then we go to the Rodriguez fight against Jingling Lee, and you have Lee at ninety one hundred, right? I mean, he's he's he was supposed to be a two and a half, two and a, two to one plus favorite against Tony Ferguson, but now he's a plus one thirty, so he's being priced as if he's a two to one favorite, and he's actually a plus one thirty, so he's unplayable. You just you just can't fight this map. Um, and yet, on the other hand, you have Daniel Rodriguez, who was priced to fight um, Daniel Holland, uh, Kevin Holland, right? Um, who is seventy five hundred, and he is a plus, and he is now a minus one hundred and sixty, being priced as, you know, he's being priced as 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 a two to one underdog, but he's a three to two favorite, so he's basically a theoretical lock um, when it, you know just based on win equity, now. The inside the distance prop on Daniel Rodriguez isn't so great. Um, you have plus 225, so maybe he's fadeable, right? I mean, just on GPPs, just because maybe he doesn't have that upside, even if he wins at 7,500. Um, but he certainly, 
it certainly renders Jingling Lee a, a very tough sell. Let's put it that way. Uh, 9,100 plus 130, uh, that's really, really tough to overcome. So he went from being one of those popular fighters on the slate to one of the least mo- one of the least popular. Um, and that's that. And then you get this other this other fight. Now you have Nate Diaz and Tony Ferguson. Both were priced as if they were going to be – well, Ferguson was priced as a 2-1 to one underdog. And Diaz was priced to fight Shamaya. So he was basically, he's like 67, 66, 70, 6700. So he's being priced as a five to one plus underdog. And now the fight's basically a pick em. So you have both of these fighters just criminally undervalued. Okay. Not to mention the fact, you know, I forgot to mention this, that in both the Shamaya and the, the Ferguson fight, they're both going to be five rounds. So this Nate Diaz, Tony Ferguson fight, you have two guys who are priced as two to one underdogs or higher. The fight is actually a pick em, and you get five rounds to work with. I mean, if you fade that, God bless you. I mean, just the math of that is just way too strong. And I don't even care that there's the inside the distance prop is not great. It's inside the distance prop is basically a pick em to go to a decision doesn't matter though and you have two strikers like this that are going to be slugging it out for maybe five rounds i mean and you're going to pick up significant strikes i mean the, the it's just almost impossible for the winner of this not to get me optimal um but uh yeah so that's kind of what what's happened to this card is that now both nate diaz and tony ferguson become elite plays you have kevin holland who becomes unplayable she might have a little less of a lock Right. Um, and then you have Daniel Rodriguez, who went from kind of an OK underdog play to now almost a theoretical mathematical lock. Right. And you have Jingling Lee, who's going to be a pretty good, pretty good uh, upside play at 9100. And now he's almost unplayable. Um, but that's not all that's happened with this card. See, see, in addition to 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 what's happened to these fights, the fact that now you have this inherent value in both whether you play Diaz or Ferguson and whether you play, you know, or, or Daniel Rodriguez, you now have these, these kind of like free bingo squares that allow you to jam in other high price guys. So you have a guy like all of a sudden Almeida, who was already a good play and was going to be popular now because of the presence of this value becomes even easier to play. And he's going to be through the roof popular. You know, so because you just can play him all that easily. And, and, and I'll tell you something else. These other guys become good plays, too. You know, you have even Jake Collier at 9,100, you know, who was only almost a fringe play before. Now, just because it's so easy to get him in, he becomes even more popular. And, and then you have even like even Norma Dumont, you know, it just comes a little bit better play because of the ease that you can play her. Not to mention you have... Kutalaba, who was already a smash play, now it's like a piece of cake to get him in, you know? Um, and yet, on the other end of the equation, these kind of live underdogs that we were talking about before, like like um, Johnny Walker, maybe, you know, against Kutalaba, or um, what's his name? Uh, Arosa, or um, Chieson, so these were kind of like live underdogs for different reasons that you might not even need anymore, you know, um, just because of the inherent value of these other these other guys. Now, remember, Arosa and 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 Chason and and Walker, all three of those fighters are two to one underdogs, you know. So it's unlikely that they get there. Where if you play like Rodriguez or um, what's his name, or or Diaz or Ferguson, you know, you don't quite have the same finishing upside in your win, but it's just so much more likely that you do win, you know? So as a result, these guys are going to be, you know, much less popular, okay? So to, to pull up the, the um, whatchamacallit, so to pull up the, uh, the, the, the DraftKings, I didn't uh, – board and oh i apologize for this i got these two lines on my monitor now i gotta fix that um 
just to show you like how easy it is. I mean, I'm not going to do this, but like, if you want to just make like the good plays and you can play either of these guys. And by the way, I mean, if you're playing cash games, I mean, you have to, you know, you play both these guys together. I mean, you're getting, like I said, five rounds to work with on a basically a pickup fight. And these guys are both priced to move. You know what I mean? Um, you play one of these two and then you play Rodriguez you, you could just basically just then you could just jam away. You know, you put you can play your Kutalaba really easily. You could play both Shemaev and um and Almeida probably without a lot of stress. You know, and then you could play one of those seventy six hundreds or whatever. I mean, in this build, by the way, I mean there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong, I don't think, given the prices with, with a good old game stack, even in GPPs with, with the Ferguson and Diaz, just the price is just so strong. I mean, you get five rounds out of these two and they slug it out and one of them gets like 70 and the other one gets 50. That's that's fine, you know? And it allows you to get up to all this other stuff. Um, so, so that's what's become of the slate. Now, now the thing is, though, is that this particular, you know, uh, lineup and, and ones like it is going to be super hyper mega chalk. OK, because everybody sees this, what I've been talking about. Everybody's going to play one of Diaz or Ferguson. What's his name? Rodriguez is going to be popular. You'll be able to jam in both of these Shemayevs and, and, and Almeidas with no stress. You know, so so these guys, those builds are going to be duped right into kingdom come. So, you know it's important to distinguish between what the good plays are and what the, what the plays you're going to make are so like, for example, like those plays I talked about, like Arosa, Jason, um, even some Johnny Walker, I, th those plays are still good plays right? for the same reasons they were before. Like their, their win conditions as unlikely as they are being two to underdogs is usually conducive to a good score. But the problem is, is that is that it's only going to happen once every three times, you know, where these other underdogs are pickums or even favorites. So, um, however, you do have the benefit of of an ownership discount now, you know. So, um, I still think you can play those in GPPs, but but let me let me tell you what I really think you need to do. If you're going to play GPPs, and I'll tell you, I really consider just withdrawing from the whole contest because of how chalky the the the, the overwhelmingly most likely results are going to be. Um, I decided to run some builds and 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 play anyway. And, and what you're going to have to do is 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 accept some kind of crappy plays in the name of, of, of lack of duplication. You know, and we've seen this so often in the last couple of months, really, but specifically in the last couple of weeks, just these fights that you just don't think are going to finish just do, you know, and it's almost always some low owned fighter that you don't think about. And on a card like this, where so much of the obvious is obvious, you know, you have to shuffle a little bit and play the play some other some other plays, you know. Um, so like if you get like, you know, uh, like Pickett, you know, got, you get like um, D Danielle Wolf, you get uh, a bunch of uh, I don't know, like how like how much Pickett do I have? I probably have more Pickett than I probably would have imagined. I mean, he's because he's such a bad play, right? He's slow. He's barely the favorite, you know. But in, in, in when you're playing these types of chalky builds, otherwise you have to get somewhat different in other places, you know. So I'm probably going to have about 25% of, of Pickett. I'll have a couple of sprinkles of Wolf maybe, you know. But I'll go right back to those same ones, some guys, same, those same fighters I did before, that being, you know, Arosa, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, some Leonez, some uh, Jason, you know, not as much as I was, but still going to have some because they are going to be lower owned than the more obvious, the more obvious underdogs, you know? 
Um, and I guess that's it. I mean, I guess I just wanted to update you on that. It's, uh, it, I'm getting probably less Haley how it's hanged than I would otherwise because. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it just it just seems as though it's become a stars and scrubs type slate. But then again, if that's the case, then maybe you're supposed to zig a little bit. Now, like here's another one, another fighter I have like twenty percent of. I have like twenty percent of 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 uh, of Martinez, and I originally had zero. But but when you when you inject all this new chalk into the builds. If you're gonna if you're gonna run Saberson or, or a decent smart optimizer or smart randomizer, you're gonna get some of these uncomfortable plays because otherwise you're just in 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 dupe city. Okay, um, so uh, that's I guess gonna do it. Um, good luck everybody tomorrow. Um, I, again, I almost just withdrew from the whole slate, but then I, I did actually, and then I just re-entered. Um, so I am gonna play. Hopefully, get different enough. And uh, that'll do it. Good luck.